Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be doing a little experiment in the realm of ice cream sandwiches. Have you heard about the ice cream sandwich that doesn't melt? I have, and it was many years ago, I believe it was about 10, nine years ago, there was this story that went around that an ice cream sandwich that was left out in the summer heat, in the sun, did not melt. I believe there is some truth to this, but I'm going to find out for myself by testing this theory that the ice cream sandwich does not melt at warm temperatures or at room temperature or at really warm temperatures like the summer heat. So very specifically, the ice cream sandwich that does not melt is the Great Value brand, which you can find at Walmart. That's their store brand of ice cream sandwiches. So I'm going to test out the Great Value ice cream sandwich along with a few others that I found at the store, just so we can have a little side-by-side -side comparison. Alrighty, so here we are. Here is the ice cream sandwich that we are talking about. This is Great Value brand. For those of you not familiar with the ice cream sandwich, ice cream sandwich is composed of two kind of cakey like chocolate wafers. In the middle has vanilla ice cream. This is the classic combination. Apparently these are actually hard cookies. They're wafers, but once kind of like an ice box cakes, once they kind of sit up and be friendly with the ice cream, they soften and they turn kind of cakey. These are my youngest kid's favorite. He adores ice cream sandwiches. I think it's his go-to ice cream confection if you ask him. I, on the other hand, I'm sort of ambivalent. I think they're fine. Never was in love with them, but today we're gonna test them. So this is the famous infamous one that does not melt. I also picked up the Great Value Neapolitan version of the ice cream sandwich just for pure nostalgia. <laughs> this is what I remember as being pretty popular as a child of the 70s and 80s. And Neapolitan is the combination of strawberry, vanilla, chocolate. Now, were you one of those kids that wanted to savor the best flavor so you ate the worst one first? I was one of those kids, so I would eat the strawberry. I thought that was the worst one. Then vanilla, then chocolate. Chocolate was always my favorite. I also picked up this brand, this is Hood, and these happen to be mini. They're just square versions of the ice cream bar, ice cream sandwich. Alrighty, last one I got was this one, and this is by Klondike. This is an ice cream sandwich. This one's a little bit different because the ice cream is not purely vanilla. It is cookies and cream. So since it's winter here in New England, putting these outside won't do much of anything because it's 36 degrees out and so these will stay frozen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some of these sitting at room temperature for a period of time and then I'm gonna have another set that I'm gonna place in my oven. The temperature is set at 84 degrees. That is the proofing setting on my oven. That is a pretty nice, perfect summer temperature, ambient temperature in my book. So we'll test it in the oven as well. So here we have the great value, the infamous ice cream sandwich that does not melt. So the theory goes that the ice cream bars that don't melt contain guar gum or some kind of gums that are added in the manufacturing process to stabilize the ice cream and to give it a certain texture and hence it doesn't melt. It's kind of like a gel. That's my understanding. So ingredients, ice cream has milk, cream, skim milk, sugar, buttermilk, corn syrup, whey, and then 2% less of natural flavors, carabine, carabine gum, cellulose gum, tara gum, carrageenan, which is a seaweed gel, mono and diglycerides, a natural extract for color. So one, two, three, four, four kinds of thickeners. So that's what gives it its heat invincibility. All right, so these came out of the freezer. Let's do this quickly while these are still cold. So this was a great value, 12 ice cream sandwiches. And I believe it was $2.47, something on that order, less than $3. So here are the ice cream sandwiches. I'm gonna put one on each pan here. So here is the great value plain. Having set that on the plate. Next, let's do the Great Value Neapolitan. 
Neapolitan has three flavors of ice cream. This was the same price as the originals. Same kind of wax paper. Ooh, the pink looks brighter than I remember. Pink and brown are such a great color combination. That's an old band, isn't it? Pink and brown. Are they still around, pink and brown? I hope they are. All right, here we go. Ooh, I don't like how it's angled. I don't want that parallelogram. I want that to be nice and straight. All right, so that is the Great Value Neapolitan ice cream sandwich. Next, let's do Hood. Hood has this nice little opening here. I like that. And they are mini. So compared to, so compared to the Great Value brand, it's a square and definitely smaller. So let's open that one up. This paper, I have to say, feels a little less waxy, a little less coated, and easier to unwrap. Ooh, I like the distribution of holes. This little perforation, look how cute. And tidy and even. Although this is what I think of more classically for an ice cream sandwich, but look how many other hair. This looks more like a tufted couch or something. This looks more like uh, needlework or something, you know? Lastly, we're gonna do Klondike. Klondike. This one only contains four, and I believe this one was the most expensive. I think it was $3.98, something like that. This looks more like an Oreo in terms of the gestalt, right? We have the ice cream, which looks thicker than the other bars in terms of cookie proportion and ice cream proportion, thicker. And course, branded Klondike. So we'll set that on its own plate. Very cute. All right, we'll take these outside. So while we're waiting for our ice cream bars to melt, let's go ahead and do a taste test. First, Great Value brand. I'm gonna cut it. Show you a cross section. Cute. Alrighty, itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. It's what I remember an ice cream sandwich being like. The cookie portion or the top and the bottom little chocolate portion is kind of almost cakey in texture and it sticks to the back of your teeth. Do you remember that? Like when you bite, it kind of just sticks there. The vanilla flavor is not very pronounced. Mm -mm. Nor is the chocolate for that matter. You know what this tastes like? This tastes like those sleeves of generic cookies that you can get that are sandwich cookies that have a little bit of cream and then their cocoa cookies on the outside. It tastes exactly like that. It almost tastes a little bit like graham crackers rather than chocolate. The inside is pleasantly cold as ice cream should be. The taste and consistency remind me a lot of frozen Cool Whip, which is a product you can find here in the States. And in its frozen state, this is very similar to that. It's kind of firm, but it's got a very airy quality to it. But I would say, Cool Whip even has more vanilla flavor than this. This hardly has any vanilla flavor in it whatsoever. Alrighty, next we have Neapolitan. I have not had this in such a long time. I always wanted to do this and I never, I don't remember ever doing this, but cutting each one into different sections so that you could separate them. But unfortunately, this wasn't gonna split easily. But anyways, so let's taste the one that I remember being the worst, which was the strawberry. Alrighty, strawberry first. Oh yeah. Totally like I remember. That kind of strawberry pokey flavor. Same kind of whipped consistency as the original. Very fluffy and airy. This one to me feels more nostalgic somehow, this flavor. Alrighty, strawberry. Alrighty, in the order of how I would eat <laughs> as a kid. Next we have vanilla. Mm-hmm. This is exactly like the original one. It has a light vanilla flavor, same kind of whipped consistency with a slightly sticky, cakey top and bottom. Alrighty, chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate, here we go. I haven't had this in so long here. Ah. Oh! Oh my gosh. I haven't had chocolate ice cream in a minute, and it's good. Love the combination of flavors, chocolate, chocolate. And the consistency works for me too. Mmm. 
That's great. I like that one a lot. Do they make chocolate flavored ice cream sandwiches? If they don't, they should. Yes, that one's good. <laughs> Next, we have the Hood Mini ice cream sandwich. So right off the bat, I noticed that there is a color difference. This is the Great Valley brand. It's got more of a cream color and the Hood has more of a very snowy white color. So when we cut it, similar consistency as the Great Value, although the wafer cake looks a little bit thinner. Is it thinner? Slightly thinner than, maybe it's the same consistency. Yeah, it's about the same, same thickness. But the ice cream looks to be a little bit thicker than the Great Value. Alrighty, let's give that one a taste. Mmm. This one has a very similar kind of whipped, fluffy consistency as well. And when I bit into the, the ice cream bar, ice cream came out on both sides. This has a better flavor, a stronger flavor. To me, this actually tastes more like Cool Whip than the others. The Great Value ones didn't really have much kind of vanilla flavor at all. While this one, on the other hand, has a pronounced vanilla flavor. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. The cookies also don't feel as sticky. They're more cakey, but they don't stick so much to your teeth. Mm. I prefer this one better. It's just more flavorful. <laughs> Lastly, we have the Klondike. And this one is different because it is cookies and cream. This one is definitely the thickest one of all of the ones I purchased in cross section. Definitely thicker and the cookie is much thicker too. So let's cut this one and see how it cuts. So when I cut it, the ice cream doesn't ooze out. Nice, looks like a giant Oreo. Alrighty, let's give this one a go. Get the Lucky Mouse. Hmm. Oh. This one's very different because the cookie is so much thicker. That's immediately what I notice. Biting through it is a completely different experience. It's not just about the kind of foamy interior. It's more about the kind of cakiness of both the top and bottom cookies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you get the ice cream in the middle, which tastes different than all the others. This definitely has more of a kind of cookies and cream flavor to it. It just tastes it by itself. Mm-hmm. It's definitely vanilla, but this almost tastes more like an ice cream cake to me. That combination of thick, cakey cookie with the ice cream that definitely, in my opinion, plays second fiddle to the cakey portion. Mm hmm You actually have to chew through the wafer. I'm calling it a wafer, even though it's not crunchy. You know what I mean? The cookie. <laughs> hmm. I don't like that as much as I thought I might like that. I thought this one might be a little bit more decadent than the others, a little bit more rich, but it's kind of just over the top and a bit much. This is just an ice cream sandwich, after all. Of the four, I like the hood ones the best. I feel like that's the most classic, sort of the epitome of an ice cream sandwich. But second place, if not tied, would be the chocolate portion of the Great Value Neapolitan ice cream sandwich. That was really, really good. Just totally took me back to my childhood in terms of chocolate ice cream flavors. Alrighty, so that's my two cents on the flavors of the ice cream bars as they are as ice cream. So now let's conduct the experiment portion of this test. I'm gonna have one set of each of these ice cream bars sitting at room temperature, and then I'm gonna have another set that I'm gonna place into my preheated oven that's set for 84 degrees. I'm gonna leave them in there for an hour and see how they look after an hour. So I'm gonna use my infrared thermometer and according to it, the surface temperature of my countertop is about 62 degrees. 64 degrees, depending on where you point it. So I'm gonna set some at 
room temperature and then others at 84 degrees and we'll come back in an hour and see where we're at all right my lovelies see you in a little bit all right my lovelies i'm back it's been two hours and 12 minutes 27 seconds since i left my ice cream sandwiches sitting here at room temperature so the ambient temperature was about 64 degrees last time and it's reading 66 for the tray this ice cream sandwich is 63 degrees this one is 64 degrees. The hood one is 64 degrees as well. And the Klondike bar is 63. So they are at room temperature and they look pretty much the same, pretty much. The Klondike bar has a little bit of kind of poofing on the side here, but look up the others. The Neapolitan one, even though it's the same brand as the other, the Great Value, as the original has a little bit of puffing on the side a little bit of oozing but really it looks pretty much the same and the hood teak one as well the hood bar looks pretty great as well look that is at room temperature so these are the ones that were sitting for two hours and 13 minutes at room temperature let's check out the ones that i put in the oven at 84 degrees and see how they're doing <laughs> all right so this one, we actually do have some melting. Here are the results of the 84 degrees. The Klondike bar definitely melted. And the hood bar, the cake is actually melting more than the ice cream. Let's check the temperatures. So for the great value, that's actually showing some melting on the side. There we are at 79 degrees. The second one next to it, is at 77 the hood bar is at 77 and the klondike 80. so they actually do melt this was sitting for two hours and 13 minutes as well at 84 degrees so this would simulate a hot summery day not like blazing hot but these were sitting in there for over two hours two hours for a frozen treat this result is what i expected at room temperature after you know, just a few minutes really. Look at this one, isn't that bizarre? So the ice cream doesn't really look like it's melted all that much. It's just kind of bleeding. Isn't that wild? Just kind of oozing. This one is behaving more like I expected. Like a puddle. These ones are kind of just settling. Kind of look like, more like marshmallow. Melted marshmallow not nearly as much melting as I would have anticipated. And just because I'm curious, I want to see how these cut. So we'll just cut this and see how it does. Yeah, the cake part cuts. Oh yeah, so the bottom cake definitely is so soft. It's just melted in there. But the top feels very much similar to the standard ice cream bar. Just the bottom part is really oozy. I don't think I could even pick this up. Let me see if I can even pick it up. No, I can peel this off. Whoa, look at that. That just comes off like a sheet. And the ice cream, you can see a foam pattern. You kind of see there's like a foaminess. And it feels like a, a foam. Not really like ice cream. This one's foamy too. So when I looked up the ingredients, the Klondike bar contained only two types of gum doesn't necessarily mean there's less gum, but there was only two types, guar gum and carob bean gum, I believe, while the Great Value one had another gum and then it also had carrageenan in it as well. So let's see. So when I try lifting that up, that kind of just disintegrates, but oh my goodness. This too is almost more like a milkshake consistency. It is melted. So this 84 degrees, I would say that's melted. So it does melt. So after two hours at 84 degrees, they do melt. They just don't behave the way you think an ice cream would. This is definitely surprising, right? <laughs> at room temperature for two hours, you would think that you would get more melting than this, but they're not melting. I think I can still pick these ones up. Let's see. Yeah, I can. The bottom one is much softer though. The consistency is much softer. And if I squish it, it definitely is squishy. And 
it's not frozen anymore. But here's a little kind of close-up of the consistency. It's like whipped cream. It should be noted that the gums that are included in these ice creams are completely safe. There's nothing unsafe about this. They're just added to give the product more stability. It's just surprising it's because it's not behaving as we expect, but it's completely safe. And this, this one's much softer. This one's kind of just like a mess. But the great value one I could pick up, but now my hands are a mess. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, there you have it. The ice cream bars do melt. They just don't melt in the way that you may expect. They do get very soft, but they don't puddle necessarily or behave like you would think a ice cream should. Still perfectly safe and edible, just surprising. All right, my lovely, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. All right, now what do I do with all these ice cream sandwiches? I'm gonna compost these ice cream sandwiches. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Why do these remind me of like dog ears? I don't know.